and Montgomery County. <coughs> One second. Okay. Uh, reading in English at Montgomery County Community College. ESL levels are one to six for continuing education department at Monco uh, Community College and ESL levels one to six and Tuffle for Bucks County Community College. Okay, Terry, um, go ahead. Thank you so much. So as we said, we're going to talk about how to supplement your ESL class. And thank you, Penn T. Salt East, for this opportunity. And my screens aren't going. Oh, boy, so much for that second degree, right? That's OK. We'll just shop, stop the share a sec. I'll make you guys little. I'll take this. Oh, that way it changed. Yeah, I found that if you do the full screen, it, if you click somewhere else, it won't proceed. So I sometimes I don't do the um, slide share uh, full screen. I just keep, you know how you can keep the notes on the left? Like that. Okay. Uh, we'll I can't see that. it yet. Yeah, we'll do that. Great. Yeah, I mean, at least you can go from one to the next, so. Okay, yeah, I don't know why that happened. I apologize. But sometimes it gets stuck. I don't know. Okay, so tonight we're going to discuss ways to supplement our classes. First, I'll speak for about 10 minutes. Then if we had a lot of people, I was going to put you in breakout rooms, but we only have a little people. And we'll talk and everybody will share their ideas. This is how I teach my classes. I don't talk very long. I do like 10 minute talk and then at least 10 minutes everybody talk and then we switch again you know so we do we break it up into little chunks and it works much better okay so let's talk about my esl level one at monco and at bucks i do the levels one to six but with different books at monco we use top-notch books and workbooks and at Bucks, we use English in Action, which is a National Geographic book. It's got absolutely gorgeous pictures. And I supplement with games, mostly focused on vocabulary and YouTube sites. And I'm going to give you guys a list on the last screen. I'll have everything. I write dialogues for every topic and they act them out. And I choose names for the characters from the baby names from the students in my class's countries. So like if I have someone from the country of Georgia, I look up Georgian baby names and that's the names of my characters. And they get such a kick out of it. They're like, those are from my country. Once a week, each student prepares a cultural connection Google slide and tells us the location, the food, the traditional clothing, and any special holidays from their countries. Now at Monco, I teach reading classes. I teach American kids, but I also get to teach the bridge course. So this is a course they're done their ESL classes, they're about to go into college reading. So it's a two semester course, but we've been running them as seven week. So it's seven weeks, seven week. And we get students from all different countries. That's why I love it. The last time I taught, I had 18 students from 18 different countries. It was amazing. It was so much fun. So there we use LEAP for our curriculum. It's actually a Canadian curriculum, but it's very interesting. It's a lot about health issues, a lot about family issues, and a lot about technology issues. So they're like the three things everybody cares about, right? Health, family, and technology. So it's right on point, I think, right now. They also do the cultural connections and we discuss news stories from NPR. There's a part of NPR, Goats and Soda, and they really like that because that's usually stories from all over the world. 
All righty, Penn State, where I know dear Carla from. <laughs> At Penn State, some of my courses are all international students. Some have like a third international, a third immigrant, and a third American students. It just kind of the roll of the dice, how it works. I use a lot of Penn State library materials. That's the nicest, nicest part of working there because um, they have 45,000 articles you can pull from in their library. So I use a lot of the OER materials so they don't have to buy books. And what's great about that, as you guys know, they can just click the words when they don't understand them and it gives them the definition. Something else I do with my Penn State classes, especially the ones where maybe I have a third international students and everybody else is American, I make sure I meet with them the second, seventh, and 13th week of the semester just to say, how are you doing? Just those nice one-on-one -on -one conferences. I go over vocabulary at the start of every lesson, which all the students appreciate because college vocabulary isn't like high school vocabulary anyway. So it helps everybody in my class. I always remind them what's due that week. I always put a little message on our learning management system. This is what's due this week because it can get confusing for them between the syllabus and our modules and if they look in assignments and oh there's a discussion and that's not in the assignments. So I just give them a separate little list of what's due every week and I do a lot of group work and I split up the groups all the time. So all the kids get to know each other and that works out beautifully. TED Talks, I know a lot of people use TED Talks with the higher levels. And in fact, one of the speakers this summer talked about that. I would never just put on a TED Talk because I'm my second language is Spanish. I'm really bad at it, but I love it. <laughs> I, like I can think in it and I can read in it and I can write in it. When people talk to me, I get nervous. But I just imagine listening to a TED talk in Spanish, maybe getting 80%, right? And then getting a quiz on it, I'd cry. So what I do is I make sure they have guiding questions. And those are the same kinds of questions they're going to see on the quiz. So I'll write, if we're in class, I'll write them on the board. If we're online, I put them on a Word document. And that way, at least their mind is ready for those questions. It helps their schema. And it also helps with vocab, because again, there might be weird vocab in that particular question that they can look up in advance. We also talk a lot about point of view, because as you guys know, where you come from in the world affects your point of view so much. And everybody that writes has their own point of view. So we talk about the TED Talks from that angle a lot. And we do the main idea, of course. And we talk about persuasion. We say, what, what are they trying to get you to think here? You know? So it kind of takes, it's more than just watch it and tell me what they said. It kind of takes it to another level. Oh, my favorite one. Bring in real stuff. <laughs> Online, it was so easy this summer. We, I brought it silverware to the screen. I brought Pokemon, whatever we were talking about. Now that I'm back in the classroom, it's a little harder. I have to bring a bag. But the night we talked about superheroes, one of the girls actually dressed up in a Pikachu costume. <laughs> And she's sitting there taking class in her Pikachu costume. And we talked about um, superheroes and what qualities they had that made them superheroes and what qualities their families had that made them superheroes, especially if their families had emigrated with them. And that, that's my favorite class. So here are the sites that I use. They're all here. The bazillions is so cute for the um, lower levels. It's a song about the prepositions. 
and it stays in like my head forever and it stays in their head forever it's adorable Khan Academy is great for grammar he has you can um cc all the screens and he writes everything so they get to see him writing I use for the really low level star fallen enchanted learning. They have a really cute one, some cute things, but I tried not to get anything that's going to be insulting. You know, um, they're really good for seasons, like explaining spring, fall, summer, and winter. I also use BBC um, learning, in BBC co.uk learning english i really like that one for the higher intermediate students they enjoy that and duolingo i don't think it's going to replace us <laughs> i say do duolingo for 10 minutes a day and you Terry, will improve yes are you able to make the uh, the print larger i don't know <laughs> let's see if i can so everybody can see Ah, it got smaller. Let's go this way. Maybe it'll get larger. It's backwards. How's that? I think that's as big as. Oh, that's a lot it. better. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So um, I did the Bazillions, Khan Academy, Starfall, BBC Company UK, and Duolingo. So Duolingo, I personally use um, because like I said, I'm a second level. I'm like level four Spanish, but I'm also learning Russian. It's a long story. So <laughs> Duolingo is sort of helpful for that. I have to get a Russian keyboard. So, but it's good I did it because I can tell my Russian students they need to get a Russian keyboard <laughs> if they're going to do it. So um, I really like it. It's not going to replace us. It helps them with grammar and sentence structure. And NPR, like I said, goats and soda. That's my very favorite. I love that because it makes for great conversation with the higher groups. The higher level learners, I love Grammarly. Um, not only do I tell them to put that on their computers so that in their emails to teachers, they'll come out nice because if you upload Grammarly, then it works on your email too. It's free. But Grammarly now has sites where you can go over all the grammar that they check for. So we use a lot of that. We use Purdue Owl, of course. Purdue Owl was recently bought out with Chegg, though. So there's some um, advertisements on it. It's kind of a pain. And the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. So I think that is it. Yep. Oh, I wanted to show you the... I wanted to show you the dialogues that I do. So here's an example of one. Aren't they cute? I can't publish them because I use Google Images, but <laughs> maybe someday I'll find out how to use pictures and publish them. But like, this is for Saturday. They're going to go to grandma's house and rake leaves. And they always have a yummy breakfast. So um, this time I picked names from I have students from Russia in this class and, oh, I don't know, all over the place, but these three are Russian and that's from wherever Chelsea's from, I forget. <laughs> so they're going to grandma's house and then like I always make them eat so that they learn different foods. So we do a different food for breakfast, lunch and dinner usually. And then. I have them do all different things. Sometimes they walk, sometimes they take public transportation, sometimes they drive. But for fall, I thought walking would be nice. And then um, I try to talk about things that aren't in the books, like shed. You would never find shed probably in any of our ESL books. So we talk about how people have sheds and they rake and then the different color leaves so that when they're outside, they can say, look at all the leaves and then jumping into a leaf pile and then the leaf truck, because my level one students might get a little frightened if this giant truck comes down the street and it's sucking things. So I just do things like this. It's really nice. And then at the end, come on down. See, they had vegetable soup and grilled cheese for lunch. So. At the end, I do the 
comprehension questions, usually they're similar. Where did they go? What did they do? In this case, what they eat for lunch? And then this is my level one class. So they cleaned up the leaves with the rakes and the kids put the pumpkins on the steps and the kids jumped into the leaves. So they love those. They love those. In my teacher evaluations, they always say, oh, the stories are our favorite part. <laughs> Okay, so now questions, or I'd love to hear from everybody. Do you guys want to well, we have, right? we have yeah, 13, we have 13. So do you want to go in those breakout rooms? It's up to everybody. If you want to, you can, and then come back out. Max saying yes. So can I can't make the breakout rooms. Can you do it, Leslie? All right, let's see. You can do arbitrary rooms, so we're all. I can, I can, I can do. I can make two breakout rooms. Yeah, why don't you do it? Okay. And we'll all talk, and then we'll come back and share. Daddy, do you want me to make two rooms or three? It's up to you. Why don't we do three? Then we'll have okay. more interesting. Okay. Let's when do we come three. Back. But when we come back, everybody has to talk. That's what I tell my classes. Thank you. Sure. Dr. Kadima. Hey, Dr. Kadima. We're sending you to a breakout room. Stephanie. Hello, Stephanie. Hi, Mac. Hey, Stephanie. Uh, we're, we're trying to send you to a breakout room. If you oh, see, I'm listening. I'm not paying attention. This is my first conversation because five uh -huh. o'clock I need to cook dinner. And I said, well, maybe I can listen while I'm <laughs> cooking dinner, which is okay. why my video is off. <laughs> that's, like, that's fine. It's like but, the wrong time of day for me. Uh, oh, Stephanie, that's fine. Uh, you can I can join still join it. You can still join the conversation. I can still join, but I yeah. mean, I'm, I can join the room, but I yeah. had my self muted because my family keeps coming in and out of the kitchen to talk to me. Also, that's fine. That's all right. Okay. Oh, you're muted, Joanna. Now, we're not in control, so we can't end the breakout room for everyone. Hang <laughs> out. But um, no, it's, it's very, you know, I enjoy these PT. Well, I haven't been to the last two PT conversations, but what a, I love that, you know, Terry and Helen, just the opportunity to come together with our colleagues. Yes. You know, it's wonderful. Isn't that nice? Like, yes. it's so nice doing what we're doing. Yes. You know, and it's so nice they're having the conference in November. That's going to be fun. Yes. Yeah, that's fun. online, right? I assume that's online. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I just got the email today, you know, about that. So I think I'm going to bring some students again. If I get chosen to speak, I think that'll be fun. They had so much fun last time. Good. I hope they, I hope they get chosen to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because the next day in class, they were like telling everybody, that, you know, they couldn't believe it. Because <laughs> like, our, our plenary speaker, wasn't he amazing teaching at all those countries and stuff? So uh, they were like, people do that? You know, they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe it. Well, it's a wonderful field. You know, TESO is, I, I fell in love with it. Wild years ago, and I'm still in love with it. 
and it's just magical because you know we we have students sometimes that learn here and go back sometimes we have students that learn here and stay it's just it's just lovely and also exactly and also the different kinds of teaching like you could do you teach refugees you could teach international students you could teach immigrants you could teach english as a foreign language you know you could teach yes. there's such a variety of types of you know the teaching esl teacher training you can sure. teach other teachers you know and then we come together some people are at monco some people are Delco, some people at CCP, some people at high school, you know, intensive language program. Right. The, the yeah, I think last year at the conference, one lady was even elementary. She was elementary ESL teacher, which was yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Teddy, you teach at Penn State Abington. Yes. Is, is it like an intensive English language program? What is no, um, they have um, an AIMIS program, AIM, I don't know, some acronym. So they the international students have to take two English classes now. We used to give them a choice, one or two, but now they make them take two because college is a business. That's what I, mean. I don't know. I don't know why. So um, they, it's the classes, all international students usually. Mm -hmm. And then they just let them loose after that. Sometimes they'll run a public speaking class. That's all international students. So I teach that sometimes, but I like my classes better when it's international students, immigrant students, and American students. Oh, all so I find if I don't choose one of those classes, I can get that mix because the international students all like me. So they all come to my classes anyway. So I have like right now, the class I taught right before you guys, it's like a third, a third, a third. It's so cute. It's so cute. And I mix up the groups all the time and they're all learning to be friends and yeah. when when the kids from Wuhan are talking about Wuhan the audience isn't falling asleep because not everybody's from China you know it's yeah. like it's just better it's better especially at Penn State because we have mostly Chinese students oh. and then we have some Middle East students and some um, Indian student Indian Pakistan Bangladesh Yes, but um, it's not like at Monco where we have like 26 countries, you know, now at Monco, that bridge course, that's just for ESL and immigrant students that had to take the ESL courses. So they came into the college, they were put on the ESL track, they probably did not did continuing ed, which I teach, and then they went to the ESL classes, which are just really reading and writing mostly, mostly writing. And then they come to our reading classes and we're getting them ready for college academic reading. And I love that so much. Cause like Joanna said, we're using interesting books, you know, yeah. and we're starting to get deeper conversations. It's just wonderful. I really love those classes and the students love it too. And they get so friendly because usually they are all from different countries. So they learn how to make friends and some of them stay friends. I watch them, you know, like a lot of people at Monco want to become dental hygienists, x-ray hygienists and medical transcription people. Those are like the top three. So I see them in the hallway later. They're all like studying for their tests together. It's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> And box is fun too, because there I just teach ESL. I just teach one through six. What and is that? I'm sorry. Just ESL. Just um, just um, mostly international students, levels um, one to six. Which, which place is that? Box County Community College. Oh, Box County. Yeah, right. Denise right. wow. has a fabulous program. So yeah. they're usually from all over the world. And Bucks has really neat courses. They have, you can become an airline pilot. 
or like a train driver, you know, they have stuff like that. So I had a kid, he started level three and yeah. now he's becoming an airline pilot. That's <laughs> like, wonderful. Amazing, That's amazing. So, wonderful. so I get such a kick out of that. And I, at Monco for 15 years, I've also taught the continuing ed one to six ESL. Yeah. And it's funny because I'll have them there and then I'll have them in the bridge course, you know? Oh, you know, okay. do both. Now at Penn State, when we had the old director that I liked, um, he would bring students here for like the summer. And that was so cool. We had students from Japan for the summer, students from Korea for the summer. That was really neat, but you didn't get the continuation. You know, right. you didn't get to see them go on, but that was really fun. The Korean kids had a blast here. Yeah, yes, they yes. had a lot of fun. Yeah. But you know, it's like right now, I've I had two kids in college until last year, so whatever anybody offers me, I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you want me to teach. So are they but all uh, online courses or you have to come no. right now um i'm two two like on monday and wednesday i teach six so two are online at 12 30 i have an online and then at night i have an online thank god but i'm running otherwise and my son just got a job at bucks so because he loves esl because he grew up coming to my classes with me. So he was a history major in college, but he's like, I want to teach ESL. It's so much fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's teaching at Bucks and he loves the higher level. You know, he loves teaching that and getting the books and having the discussions with them. So That's he's fun. having fun, but we only have two cars for four of us. So <laughs> I have to drive him there and go to Monco sometimes. <laughs> and pick him up later and then go to Penn State in the middle. It's crazy. Well, you're a busy lady. Can you ask me what your interest in Russian is? Oh, sure. Um, <laughs> my son, my younger son, when he came to Penn State, he knew he wanted to be a history major, but he wasn't sure what kind. And one of my favorite professors there, who used to be our dean, Dr. Roy Robson, is an expert in Eastern European religion. So Peter took a course with him and was hooked. He was just hooked. And he said, I have to learn the language because I want to understand better how these people speak. Because um, I went with him. He had a speaker come about the old believers in Russia and how they were persecuted. And she actually found photographs of like the people right before they were taken away and stuff in this one village. It was heartbreaking. But all of Russia is like that. You know what I mean? And the former Soviet Union and the and Ukraine. And there's like heartbreak everywhere, but such talent and such literature and such depth of culture, you know, so he he absolutely fell in love with the whole the whole culture. And then COVID hit. So um, I have a lot of friends that are Ukrainian because I live down the street from the Ukrainian center. So <laughs> I was doing some tutoring there. So I made a lot of friends um, that are Ukrainian. So they recommended a university called Kharkiv. It's in the what is now the Crimea, I think. OK. Yeah. So in a very what was war torn area, but the university survived. And um, there's a lovely lady there that will teach Russian, but only in Russian. <laughs> so he, I threw him into those classes and boy, did immersion work. He did 150 hours with her <laughs> over COVID. He was on Zoom with her and she was testing him like crazy. You know, he got tested after every class and he's fluent now. He comes with me to school because I have a lot of Russian students at all my schools. Sometimes he comes with me and they, I can't 
can't believe it. So I said, I, I want to at least learn a little, you know. And then um, because we have all these Ukrainian friends, Manor Junior College is right around the corner. So he went to Manor and he learned Ukrainian, which was really cool. Wow. So, but because when you know Russian, it's the same letters, sort of. Some of them are different. So, so he picked that up really fast, but he can only speak in Ukrainian. He can't like read, well, uh, no, speak and read, right? Because the reading's similar, but he's not very good with the writing and listening yet in Ukrainian. With Russian, he's got it all down. Yeah. What, is the, what a success story. Yeah, it was just, but it was like over two and a half years, his whole outlook on life changed just because of this one professor. So think about our students meeting us, like what we're doing, you know, that, that left such an impression on me that if we could be that one professor to our students, wow, <laughs> you know? Yes, yes. Wow. So, yeah, it's great. So that's my interest in Russian. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just curious, what's the name of that teacher, the Russian teacher? Uh, um, Galina. Do you oh. want me to get Peter? They're not back yet. I'll run Galina. again. Galina. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, her name I, is Galina. And um, oh, I'm trying to think of her last name. Shot. No, I'm going to mess up. Do you want? They're not back. If they come back, tell them I'll be right, right back. <laughs> <laughs> because I I met a teacher who teaches Russian, but I was wondering if it's the same person that um, she's talking about. But uh, <laughs> well, that would really that would really be something if it were. That would yeah, be yeah. Like life is amazing sometimes. Like yes. Way. So are you are you speaking from a university or college no uh, this is just a zoom uh, background uh, oh, I, <laughs> I wish i'm in like in a room like that it's okay just he's in right now so online that's okay in, because i i met yeah. a, uh, a russian teacher and i was wondering if it's the same one but it's okay I'm oh she's to... there though she's still in the ukraine it was all online his oh. train all not online but on zoom yes Yes. Yeah. Oh, there's lots of Russian teachers around here. <laughs> they, um, there's a lot of language schools. I'm in um, Abington, e. Jenkintown area. There's like four language schools, and the Northeast is very Eastern European. <laughs> so there's um, a lot of language schools where they charge way too much i always tell the students community college is so much better you know just go Yay. to community college because <laughs> we don't charge a lot and we have very professional teachers you know that yeah. will really make you learn so <laughs> Yeah, because the language schools are a business, right? Like I tell the Penn State kids that have to take two language courses. It's a shame, two English classes. It's a business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can also do like conversation exchange. And actually, that's free. Yes. So that is a fabulous activity that helps. It's a win-win situation. I agree. Yeah. I yeah. agree. So Max, do you just want to go around and everybody can share briefly their ideas? Do we have time? Yeah, we. I have to ask Leslie if we have time. Oh, you're muted, Leslie. Oh, we can't hear. We still can't you're, hear. Leslie, you're on mute. You have to unmute. Okay, we. Okay. All right, so who would like to start first? Joanna would. She had a great idea. Uh, and then uh, Helen would like to go second. <laughs> uh, how sweet, actually. Well, I was just talking, you know, everybody uses videos. I use videos, but I mean, what's on my mind is recently, you know, I teach advanced reading and writing. So vocabulary is important. And we're reading, reading the book uh, by Jason Reynolds, Stamped Racism, Anti Racism, and You. So I'm getting them prepared for a vocabulary quizzes coming up in several weeks. 
So I was trying to think of different, I've created a handout with about the vocabulary with a lot of like very large, exciting pictures. Like they have to know about evolve because racism is kind of evolved in some way. But so I have pictures of huge dinosaurs and also like, oh, I was talking about or extinct and then evolve. I was talking about, I want to be multiculturally sensitive, like in my syllabi and also in the photographs I choose. So I ended up having pictures of the evolution of computers because the pictures I were, were thinking of show the evolution from an, an ape all the way up to a human being. And they were all white men. That was one thought problem. Another problem is the fact that this is a thought that I grew up with, an ideology of evolution. Some of my students might not agree. I don't want to offend or whatever. So I ended up doing computers. So I ended one picture we had it started with um, a pen, and the next evolution was uh, a typewriter, and then it went on to different computers and you know big screen and little screen. And the second picture was just like computers, big screen, all the way to like a laptop. So I think they're going to appreciate that. So, you know, it's nothing new. It's nothing, you know, everybody does it, but it's sort of like, right, take your time. Because I, I make them really large and it just, you know, picture books in essence, but that's what I do. And it takes a lot of time, but everybody does it, but I'm doing it and it works. Okay. Thank you. We need, um, we don't have too many minutes left. Who would like to go next? I can do. Okay. I did share with uh, colleagues, uh, Vocaro platform is a recording software uh, for English language learners who are afraid of leading or starting a conversation um, or afraid of speaking up, Vocaru can help them just use few words. My name is, I am from Mexico, I speak Spanish. And have them listen to themselves speaking and talking about it in the audio and share with the class. The more they listen to it, they feel more confident to speak up instead of being afraid or ashamed of sharing what they know. Yeah. By the way, Vocaro is used to is easy to use. Uh, you can delete your recording afterward. What they do is they share the link with me for grid through Google Classroom. So you just type in your browser, vocaro.com. There you are for the recording. I model that before they do. And you know, some of them get excited. Oh, I can do it. See, I can speak. Then if you can, then why are you afraid? <laughs> okay, that's what I, I had to share for now. Thank you. That. How about very, next? Very quickly, Terry. Uh, we had a very rich discussion, Stephanie, Francie, Leslie, and myself. So my colleagues discussed some of these things that they use to supplement their ESL classes. Um, Number one, Perusal, which is a digital annotation system. And uh, Francie has, has been using it and she thinks that it makes her student more responsible and her reading experience becomes more interactive. And um, she, she, she is finding it very useful. Uh, also, she's been using audio books and because audio books, she can stop anywhere and have a discussion. It, these are the strategies which make her reading lessons more student focused and interactive. The, these are the two principal things that she's been using and she's been using TED Talk for a very, very long time. Then Stephanie, um, my discussant, she's been using Quizlet and Kahoot. Yes. Particularly she's been using okay. Kahoot for testing students giving Kahoot on uh, you know, final examinations. And one good thing about Kahoot is that it gives you an accurate information who has learned the matter and who has learned the content, who has not. So Kahoot is a system that tells you and gives you a lot of information about your students' learning. And 
she uses children literature also the children literature as a way to teach so many things because the concepts and the language um are simplified and there are a lot of images which help a student respond to the text uh she also uses pole everywhere which i really uh, could not understand very much at this point in time so my apologies and then we also mac khan also talked about some of the things that he uses for teaching pronunciation and and the top one he talked about is uglish uglish help uglish helps a student pronounce especially second language speakers it gives them a lot of information and it's free everything is free and a, st a student can go on uglish and then type any word and then they will see that word being used by competent speakers of language in the real context so that's the top one we talked about uglish <laughs> and then play phrase dot me play phrase dot me is is just like uglish but play phrase gives you the pronunciation in in the context of movies so be careful because in movies you have all kinds of scenes you know so you have to be a little careful using play phrase dot me so th these are the two top things that we we talked about in pronunciation that we are using and if you have a real real beginner learners so you might want to use yarn y a r n i'm writing here in uh, in chat uh, the yarn gives you discrete pronunciation of a word it does not give you the pronunciation of a word in a context like democracy so uglish gives you how democracy is being used by people but yarn will tell you how the word is pronounced democracy as four syllable the stress is falling on the second one so it get, it really breaks down the word but in a decontextualized discrete fashion uh we also talked about free online dictionary which are available to our students and the best ones are some of these lexico given by oxford university lexico is free for everyone and then we have cambridge online dictionary and cambridge and collins this is probably some of the best collins is it gives you so much information is student friendly so these are some of the things we we talked about in a, we had a fascinating discussion especially this uh, digital annotation making reading interactive it was wonderful thank you aisha <laughs> thank, no, thank you god who who is next thank you <laughs> who would like to go next helen had some great ideas well I'll, I'll talk briefly about that thank you well um i um I, I just go um, in a very simplified way uh, when I cannot access those wonderful websites that that you just told us about. I'm gonna check them all out. But um, sometimes, like what I would do in class, if we're like doing a reading comprehension, I like to share the. Um, I, I go to Google and then, especially for vocabulary, um, I uh, like. Let's say I would put the vocabulary word and write definition next to it or meaning, and then it pulls out the Google dictionary with a with a different way with a you know the meaning of the word and different ways we use it with sentences. And then I like the speaker because click I click on the speaker and it gives the pronunciation, and then the students can also practice the pronunciation of the new vocabulary word. Also some words, it's it's not that easy to explain uh, without showing them an image. So I also click on the image and you get all these images for that vocabulary word. So I noticed that the students really like that because they can now link the word with the pronunciation, uh, the meaning, the sentence and the image all at the same time. And they can easily do that on their on their phones. So this is a tool for them, you know, like um, uh, that they can use in everyday life. Um, uh, other websites like ESL library, uh, they have a lot of um, uh, they have a lot of reading uh, comprehension um, 
uh, passages with exercises, uh, vocabulary, grammar, um, true and false, and discussion questions. So they have a lot of uh, good topics for the students. I work with adult students and advanced students, so they really enjoy those topics. Others like New Zealand, they also update their topics. Uh, ReadWorks, although it is more for uh, school, school students, I work with adults, but if, if I go to the higher level reading passages, uh, they have good, good topics as well. Um, also YouTube videos, like short YouTube videos are always helpful. Uh, I click on the closed captioning and they really like it. And many of them, you can also click on the script and they can also see the script on the screen as they are watching the video. And I ask them guiding questions, you know, before they watch the video about main idea, uh, supporting details, the point of view, what do you like about it? What don't you like? And so on. Um, there's another website, Breaking News English. Uh, they always post new um, reading comprehension passages with exercises, uh, vocabulary, true, false, phrase match, uh, spelling. Uh, discussion questions. So I, I, you know, I choose topics that they already heard on the news, but now they can learn more of the vocabulary in English. Um, TED Talks, sometimes I use that, Khan Academy and, and others, you know, these are the ones that I can remember right now. <laughs> that <Okay>. is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um... We actually have like two minutes left. <laughs> so, Leslie, anybody... I, have to, I have to make an announcement, if okay. you allow me. Okay. So, friends, this is about our fall conference, which is coming up soon. Uh, Pen TESOL fall conference. In the chat box, I have, um, if I can show you, I've, I've shared a link. With this link, Google Docs, you can submit your proposal if you want to share your work with us. Uh, the conference uh, is on the power of cultural responsiveness, creating fluency. And this is in, if I can show you real quick. So please use... Uh, This is the flyer, the power of cultural responsiveness, creating fluency in a responsible way. And October 8 is the priority deadline to submit the proposal. And you can submit till October 20th. The link that I shared with you is the right link. Earlier, the link was not that correct, but this is the link in the chat box is the correct one. So please submit your uh, proposals. We'd love to hear from you in our fall conference. Over to you, Leslie. Hey, thank you so much, Mac. Well, I wanna thank everybody for coming um, and also our speaker. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Oh. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you, everyone. It was so yeah. much fun. It was a wonderful <laughs> presentation. Thank you. Jerry, wonderful session. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. It was so nice.